Hello everybody. So you are already killing me. Like I don't know. Like for last two three months, I have received a lot of requests to make a housing video. That is, I would say personally, one of the toughest video that I have ever faced before. So. Uh, even to make a housing video, although I have some experience of searching houses, I had to do a lot of research and give you the informative content by filtering out in a very short text. So I will try to keep the video as short as possible and I hope you like it. So there are two ways you can find a house in Netherlands obviously by renting it or by buying it. And And by renting, there are again two ways. Either you can rent it normally as you rent or you can sublet a house. So about subletting, I have received a lot of comments in some of the videos that I've made before. You can check those because they will be useful when you find a house. If you find a private accommodation, you are eligible to get rent allowance depending on certain number of conditions, which can give you some monetary benefits. Check this video. So let's jump to the normal renting and finally i will talk about subletting a house so renting a house requires you to sign a contract uh, with the owner of the house or the tenant of the house uh, for, uh, normally they have like a minimum term before which you cannot terminate your contract so it's like six months or one year and depending on that term if you terminate the contract so you are obliged to pay the whole amount even if you leave the house long before so keep that in mind when you sign the contract and read the terms and conditions. Sometimes they might be in Dutch. So you need to ask someone to translate or ask your friends or maybe just translate yourself. And regarding the cost, cost of housing, I have mentioned that in my cost of living video and also I have a code app blog. I'll leave all the details in the description below and also in the information card. So they generally range between 350 to 700 euro when you're a student or you're just starting to work and if you're living alone and depending on the type of house you can have a private accommodation or a shared accommodation normally there are someone asked me in the comments that what do you mean by studio so studio means like a small private accommodation which is mostly useful for a student uh, where prices may start from 350 or 400 euros and can go as high as 500 or 550 normally they are in the mid range or low range prices but still they are expensive so Normally you have two types of houses, furnished or unfurnished. Most of the students get furnished houses unless you can furnish them yourself by going to IKEA. Um, I have made an IKEA video before. So what do you know, need to know about the, them? So normally what happens is in furnished houses you have furniture, curtains, uh, everything, bed, mattress, uh, cooking, stove, everything. So then what happens is like you pay around 100 euros per month extra in rent if you have a furnished house and if you have an unfurnished house then that is where you take the benefit for a longer term if you stay for a longer term then unfurnished houses are very beneficial but again these things might be difficult for a person coming from abroad as i have seen based on my personal experience so in the first year or first six months people tend to choose these furnished accommodations which are normally uh, provided by the like the universities so they normally help you in finding this accommodation uh, in Netherlands you don't have this system of hostels so mostly you live in this kind of accommodation sometimes they are very close to the campus sometimes they are far away from the campus but you don't have this tradition of on-campus housing or hostels like in different countries India or US so you live in this kind of private or shared accommodation sometimes also apartments which is kind of a shared accommodation because you share your uh, kitchen bathroom and maybe a common space where you hang out chill and you have your own personal bedroom where you can study and do whatever you want so one more thing i missed is that uh, i keep on referring my notes there so that i can uh, cover everything and by the way this note uh, will be put in a short text of whatever i've said in this video i put it in the description below so that you can refer it back when you book any houses and all the links that you need to search for houses 
uh, I will mention them in the description below check there will be a huge list of links all the Facebook groups links to search for houses and rental frauds and everything what I will be mentioning now will be in the description below in the form of links which you can refer and read and the blog link for this text will also be in the link and I have written a Quora blog and a Quora answer also check that you will find everything there are a lot of materials just explore and enjoy so okay shared accommodations are normally cheaper as compared to private accommodations but it depends because what i have seen in my personal experience although private accommodation is expensive but depending on the condition if you are eligible for rent allowance check this video then it will help you a lot after you calculate the allowance then you pay really in total uh, you pay less as compared to a shared accommodation so choice is yours and one thing is that if you stay away from the city center like two or three kilometers away uh, then you pay a lot less sometimes you will find a difference of 100 euros because in delft i know people who stay close to the university which is very near to the city center they were paying around 500 or 550 euros in 2016 and people staying three kilometers away from the city center were paying around 350 to 400 euros so you can see like although there is a like a sharp difference of 100 to 200 euros so that is every city in Netherlands you'll have that now let's focus on the main thing of paying the rent many questions have been asked on that so rent is generally paid every month in advance so for month of april you pay by end of march normally they ask you to pay the month before from 20th onwards till the last day of the month and initially they ask you for a lump sum amount of like the first month rent last month rent and a security deposit of equivalent to one month of rent so normally ideally you would say you would pay like three months rent some cases they ask only for the first month and the security money and not the last month so you should have that much amount so if your rent is 500 euro you should have like 1500 euros or 1000 euro uh, in the beginning you need to pay uh, that is just to verify and also remember that you pay that always via a bank transaction so that you have a traceable link that you have paid this amount because there are a lot of rental frauds and it's very difficult to explain how you'll find rental frauds so i have left a link below that is a very nice article i refer that a lot of times and share it with people written by someone from tu delft you might also follow that it is in the description below so they say many things but something like something which is too good to be true or somewhere when, where they ask you to pay by cash so normally you should never pay by cash even if you pay from abroad or here uh, paying by cash is 100% fraud because you cannot trace it back and you cannot claim it even if you file a case it will be very difficult to extract the money back if, if you have paid and you may not find them at all that is also happens a lot so you need to do a background check of the person that is what I do like in Google or LinkedIn sometimes LinkedIn might be also a fraud but it's very rare and just check the description link that will help you so my personal favorites of searching for houses are camernet funda.nl easy cameras uh, sorry easy maculars easy maculars is like a broker rental broker and they help a lot all these links are also in the description below again so refer them and finally about the sublet so if you sublet a house what exactly sublet means so suppose a person is staying in that house and he is leaving that house for a period of six months or three months or one year so he's going abroad for some work in a country or internship and he wants to rent that house so it's like sub renting the house to another person person so a person who is living in rent is again renting a house to another person so that short period of renting is called subletting and normally in sublet also you have that same principle they ask you to pay in advance the first month normally they don't ask for the last month the first month and sometimes they also ask for the security money so important thing you should keep in mind because sublet there are more chances of fraud always verify the passport and important documents of the person who is trying to sublet you the house and ask him categorically that you can register the house with the municipality because if it is a fraud then he will try to dodge that question or avoid that question and also keep in mind never pay by cash always pay by a bank transaction and 
Apart from asking his identity, he might also ask you, that is very normal, that you also need to show your passport and all other identity proof so that they can prepare the contract. And then basically, I think you don't need the owner's permission. You only need that person who is renting the house, his signature and your signature. And then you can register in the municipality. Uh, depending on your case, it will vary from municipality to municipality. You need to verify, check it. So sometimes when people come in very short term like two three months for some internships or something then they might not ask for the registration but it depends i mean normally you'll need it to register finally a big warning that if you are looking to find a house in netherlands then always plan before my friends because of the rising number of students, even Dutch people, some of my colleagues here who are moving from South to North Netherlands or maybe to Amsterdam, they're facing a lot of issues when you are renting a house. You have to spend at least, keep in mind that I need to spend at least one, two or three months because it's becoming a burning issue. The student number is rising a lot, but there are not many houses. So you also keep that in mind when you are searching for house, have at least a time period of two to three months. Otherwise you may not end up in finding a house and you live in some hotels or something and which will be super, super expensive. So I will leave again all the links below and try to comment, uh, comment your questions so that I can know what your thoughts are. And I can also ask my friends if they have faced similar situations or maybe based on my personal experience, I'll try to answer your questions. Also, we have a Facebook group where you can uh, post your questions and we help these internationals and others who want to come to netherlands study here live here i have also written a lot of responses in quora i have a short blog in quora and i will also put this text in the blog link in the description below so there will be super long links in the description and i hope you like this video if you like it then please smash the thumbs up button and don't forget to share among your friends help everyone spread love subscribe to the channel and I will see you in upcoming videos of part-time jobs and till then, peace.